Alexis Griffith serves. Big swing, big swing, come on. Big block. Danielson takes the swing and scratches an itch. And now you can kind of see Hawaii starting to get into the rhythm again. A good pass on a free ball sets up this beautiful set. And Danielson goes strong. Because of her athleticism, she can elevate two off the hands and get that ball in. Outside, and talking about elevating, Liz MacArthur with the kill. Well, how about fouls? The setter pushing that ball from the right corner all the way outside, getting her body around it. A picture perfect set. That's a great point. Number two in blue, Chelsea Fowles, has really been working Hawaii's block, making them move. Danielson takes the swing, but it's long. Again, Danielson not finding her groove right now, a timing issue right there, that ball sailing out of bounds. Just needs to shake it off. You get set that much, not that you, I mean, you get tired, but you know, every once in the, now and again, you're not gonna have a perfect set or a perfect match. Danielson that time uses the Aggie block to her advantage. Hawaii has their big front line. Brittany Hewitt leads the nation in blocking. Kanani Danielson up there next to her. This is a good rotation for the Wahine. Free ball. Danielson. Smart play. Very smart play. You know that ball is going out to Danielson in this rotation. So instead of taking a big swing, she gets up. She sees that the middle of the court is wide open, tips perfect over her blocker. Switching up her shots is what she needs to do. Her hands are to the top of the antenna, her extension and reach there, amazing. Big swing, big block. Brittany Hewitt, who told you, number one in the nation in blocking. And now the block's starting to come alive. Not only does she lead the country in blocks, she can also put the ball down. 2.36 kills per set, but right there just takes one quick step over. Hands over the net, doing a good job of sealing the net. Free ball. Nicola to Danielson. Oh! Holy <laughs> Lord, Kanani Danielson. And there we go. You cannot give Hawaii a free ball in the second set, the WAC championship. Utah State going to take a timeout as they ponder Kanani Danielson. Maybe just woke up. Here's her fifth kill. She just powers that one through. A fun one to see. One of the elite of college football except their awards. Hawaii, third ranked in the nation. Elite this year, struggled, but now it looks like they're awake. Alex Griffiths passes, and Danielson, another mature play. Exactly right, that roll shot in the middle of the court, that ball set a little bit too far off the net for her. She loves it to be tight so she can go after it hard. Another smart play. Seventh kill for Kanani Danielson, her second consecutive. Liz Kaehue serving. And a good news as Shea Sorensen gets her fifth kill of the night. Sorensen has not had a hitting error yet. And that stops Hawaii's 5-0 run. Hewitt, high up, gets the kill. Exactly right, you set her high on that back one, let her go after it with her size. Quick wrist snap, puts the ball down. Hewitt uses all of her six foot three inches. First team, all conference. And that serve long from Danny Mathua. The third service error for the Wahine in this match. The thing with serving though, you try to serve tough, you don't want to give them easy balls. That one just hit the line judge. He called it out though. <laughs> Perfect pass. Oh! <laughs> Danielson. That's what we call the groove. How about Danielson going after that ball, cross court, she gets up. She can see the entire court watcher. Sees the seam in the block, goes after it. 
Utah State going to try to break the rhythm that Hawaii has gotten into. And it really does seem, Elizabeth, as if now Hawaii is playing the way they want to. They're passing. Kai Hue has been perfect, and now Mafua and Danielson having a connection. Well, exactly. I think in that, the connection and the timing had been an issue in the first set. Now they're waking up a little bit, passing a ton better, getting that ball to target so they can set all of their options. Took them a while to wake up, but see where they go from here. Well, taking a look at Hawaii's tournament resume, I mean, they've been fantastic this season. Their only loss was to sixth-ranked USC early on, and you take a look at the rest of them, and they've been so strong all year. They have their RPI at 11 because of their schedule in the WAC. Does hurt them a little bit. Last NCAA title, 1987. Last year, though, made it to the Final Four, the semifinals. I watched that match in person in Hawaii. It was incredible in it, but again, you know, they haven't been back to the title game. Their last title was in 1987. I think they're looking to make a run. It'll be interesting to see where they end up in the scheme of things. And of course, everybody was kind of waiting for the selection show November 28th, 3 to 3.30 Eastern time. Elizabeth, we've talked about it all year. This is the most wide open year in women's college volleyball. We've all been kind of speculating as where teams will end up. Dave Shoji said, I don't know where we're going to be. We'll find out on the 28th. And I love that he said that because of the RPI and the strength of schedule and all the different head-to-head, -head, all the different things that go on in the selection. When he said that, I was like, so Shoji doesn't know where he's going. I'm not going to worry that I can't plan it out. Kanani Danielson serving. Blocked from Hawaii. Again, Brittany Hewitt working in that middle. What a pass from Hawaii's libero as Mofua feeds Hewitt. You're exactly right. A quick pass makes the offense quick, up, quick enough. That's a perfect one ball in the middle for Hewitt. Hawaii on an 8-2 run. Inside, beautiful dig. A double called on the Wahine. Again, right now, Utah State did in the first set. They went after Masua in the back row because she is setting. If she has to take the first ball, someone else has got to step up and set the ball. Yep, Masua put up a great dig. Danielson, perfect pass. And Satelli, great play, but a net violation on Utah State stopped that play. Utah State, though, you got to give it to them. They're getting that ball up with. Satelli so usually, if she is one-on-one -on -one and straight on, she pounds that ball down. Utah State doing a good job of reading where the hitters are going. Foul. Looking for a touch. They do not get a touch, and that point goes to Hawaii. And the net's bouncing. They wanted that touch. Have to set the middle higher, though, so she can get the ball, her wrist snap, and get over the ball instead of under, like she did right there, so the ball went out. Fouls goes to her backcourt. Mafua passes this ball. Danielson puts it outside. Little tight, and Liz MacArthur's waiting for it. Exactly, MacArthur is right there waiting. She just goes straight up, makes it look so easy. Kanani Danielson setting this ball in too, too tight to the net. No way that ball's getting through. Utah State down by five. Cassie Hargrove serves. And they're trying to decide it. They're saying it hit the floor out before it hit Danielson. Ooh, we couldn't see because it's on the other side of the court, but that is lucky. Yeah, it looks like it hit the floor to me. Danielson, though, saying, okay, I didn't get out She's of She's like, this one I did follow the ball outside. I knew it was going out. Still went after it, though. Let's take a look at it again. You're told to follow the ball all the way to the line. Make sure it's going out. Yep, it did. It hit the ground first. Yeah, and some people would argue it hit the line, too. Okay. <laughs> but in any event, point goes to Hawaii. ESPN is the home court of College Hoops. Thursday, ESPNU delivers two quarterfinal games from the 76 Classic, first at 2 Eastern. Malcolm Delaney leads the Virginia Tech Hokies against Cal State Northridge. And then at 9 Eastern, B.J. Jenkins and the Murray State Racers take on Johnny Dawkins, Stanford Cardinal, college hoops on ESPNU.